GNC 567. It's Friday, April 16th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a primer of the tech podcast network. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> this is a Thursday show on Friday. There was no Monday show. We'll talk about that here in a second. I got a lot to catch you all up on. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. Or go fly. Microphone. Or go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in. Five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the Bucky? Four. There is no pause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Oahu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Again, my name is Todd Cochran. I want to encourage you to go over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great con- over the content over there. Of course, check out our archive podcast available via the podcast link on the website. You can get subscribed as well. You can do that via either iTunes, Zoom Marketplace, your favorite podcatcher using an RSS aggregator that can download podcasts, whatever it may be, get subscribed so you don't miss a single show of the Geek News Central podcast produced here twice weekly, except for this week. (laughs) Um, Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. And, of course, I want to give a shout out to uh, all of the Ohana. And uh, thanks for being subscribed. Thanks for being patient. A very busy, crazy, insanely nuts week. And uh, all good plans really uh, went down the toilet about uh, Monday late afternoon. Um, I had planned on putting the show out as normal. And uh, my wife had a procedure, um, which uh, was supposed to be an in-and-out procedure that ended up being uh, resulting in an overnight stay and had me pretty involved, uh, a lot of time on the phone. Uh, so anyway, long story short, no show on, uh, on Monday night and then getting through all everything else that's been going on throughout the rest of the week and uh, lots of stuff. Man, it's been crazy. Of course, at Anna McCaskey at NAB co- uh, covering for Geek News Central. We'll talk about that in a few minutes and all the content that's going to be coming up there. Had the team at NAB covering the show. We'll talk about that as well. So it really, it just ended up being a just one thing after the other, requiring me to really having to put off the show until today. And uh, I apologize. Normally doesn't happen. I had sent out via the newsletter that the uh, Monday show was going to be uh, canceled, and uh, I know a number of you had responded. Uh, had gotten some email from uh, specifically one individual that watches the show via uh, Ustream, not real happy with me because he'd hung out for a while and uh, brought in the credibility of me doing the show because I hadn't shown up. But uh, get subscribed to that newsletter. That newsletter is going to be where I'm going to send you updates on what's going on with the show. You definitely want to check the website uh, last night. Uh, we did it two-way. I did it on the website and via newsletter. So definitely check that out. And did well early in my normal show time. So everybody should have got the word that uh, we weren't going to be live uh, last night. But anyway, back to a normal schedule. And uh, so, again, I apologize for no show. It's just, you know, the perfect storm. It really, really was. And uh, with everything we announced the week before with uh, Raw Voice essentially bringing on uh, Blueberry community into the Roku and the uh, tech podcast community in the Boxy and soon to be vice versa will be in both those communities will be in the other apps as well or any other devices as well. Um, just released an absolute torrent of press request. Um, really, it's been an amazing, uh, amazing week. Um, I've spoke to some major major companies uh, had uh, uh, let's see who did I talk to well <laughs> some of the companies I can't say who I talked to because they asked for me to remain confidential about our discussions but uh, needless to say some of the biggest players in the industry um, I spent some time with 
on the phone and, and likewise this week. So uh, we're really excited about what we've introduced. Talked with the Roku folks. Uh, they're real happy with the introduction of the new channel and excited about what we've got moving forward. I'm not going to be talking about a lot of the plans and a lot of things that we're um, going to do because, man, oh, man, I, we really have come up with the response from content creators has simply been overwhelming um, with them understanding that they can get their own channel on these devices now. And uh, we're really, uh, really excited. We think we've got some serious momentum ahead of us. Uh, the team did great at, uh, at NAB. Huge response. Huge, huge, huge response uh, from the show. So we're excited about that response from there. I uh, talked with Andy, and uh, Andy has got, uh, he said, 20 uh, different uh, interviews and chipped cameras and stuff out to him. And he covered the show, talked to vendors. He specifically was, we were, him and I, as we talked, we were really excited about backpacks. You guys know that uh, I've been looking for a backpack, uh, specifically a live streaming backpack. And the folks over at Live View, of course, they'll rent you one, but they won't sell you one. But there's a new firm in uh, Texas, and I'm going to get the information for you on the next show as soon as I get some of the uh, details. But uh, a new firm in Texas is going to have a backpack. And then there is a, I think they're called TVU or something like that. They're going to be coming out with a backpack. These are backpacks we can purchase. Um, not inexpensive by a long shot. Uh, probably starting pricing, pricing starts in around $15,000. But better than renting. You know, I think the live view folks make you rent from month to month at $2,500 a month or something like that. So uh, definitely i got to figure out how that fits into the budget this year. But very exciting stuff to be able to put on a backpack, hook a camera to it, and live stream uh, while we're at uh, shows and events and doing interviews. So I'm really excited about being able to own one of those backpacks. And uh, the stuff with New Tech and their new HD system. Um, right now, I have a six-channel uh, TriCaster. So as you guys on Ustream can see, I can go between uh, really six different views here. And I can actually bring up uh, computer views as well, along with going external. So really, I've got, in essence here, six, seven, about seven different video views that I can show you. The new HD TriCasters, the initial system that is basically the the replacement, same box size as the unit I have right now, is only three channels. And uh, that just doesn't get it. Now, they, they have sell an eight-channel unit, but it's 25 grand. But what it does, watching the videos on their website and what they, holy mackerel. I am just about beside myself because you can do picture-in-picture, picture, which would make it really cool when I, you know, I don't know if it's worth 25 grand, but... When I switch to this view and I show you guys the um, the desktop, be able to have my picture in one frame and then the desktop in the other, and then do a switch, I, I think it's pretty exciting stuff. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, again, a huge amount of money to spend for really um, an incremental upgrade to an eight-channel system, and basically going having to go to and do some more hardware upgrades. So I think the focus this year will probably be on the uh, on the backpack and be able to live stream, and that'll be uh, one of the main focuses uh, finance-wise on this show uh, as we head uh, head into uh, the rest of the year. But, uh, you know, and I think once I get the backpack, then I can rent it out and help subsidize some of the costs. So anyway, if you're a new listener to the show, hey, this show is normally produced every Tuesday. It's recorded live on Ustream every Tuesday and Thursday, Monday and Thursday night. Then the show is released as a audio and video podcast both Tuesday and Friday morning. Um, usually, usually available very early in the morning Eastern Standard Time. So uh, unusual tonight for the show to be recorded on a Friday, but it's just because of things been nuts this week here. Um, so anyway, just you know, if you want to come join us on live, please do so. You normally we're recorded pretty late in the evening, both Eastern and Pacific time. So keep us in your calendar. Just to get subscribed to the show. Uh, we reach about uh, listeners in 163 countries worldwide. Uh, again, sign up for the newsletter. That's where you get all the announcements on what's happening with the show or no show. Generally, I think over the past five years, I think I can count on two hands the number of times that I have not actually been able to perform a show um, on the scheduled time and place. So 
again, my apologies this week. It's just one of the one of those weeks of perfect storm, uh, big press, big uh, you know number of uh, vendors that came to that really wanted to talk to us. Um, and not only that, but uh, got the attention of some boys from Sand Hill Road. I mean, it's been it's been crazy. It really, really was, and has been um, over the past week. So. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Let me go ahead and bust out what else I'm getting here. I want to go ahead and extend. What's going on here? I do. I. I want to extend the Ring Central giveaway. Um, talked about that a little bit on the last show. Did not get a very big response for it. So I'm going to open. I guess there's not none of you that need, essentially, um, a. Basically, a very, very cool phone system where you dial into one uh, one telephone number. It gives you a variety of voicemail boxes. You can as assign its extensions to it and drop it into uh, other individuals. Uh, uh, call, you know, basically ring their phone and forward it to their phones or whatever device they may be on. So I'm going to extend it through the next show. And if you are a small business or an individual that are looking to start a business, think that you could use this, we're giving this away for a year. It's a free giveaway, so you get uh, one person in the show is going to get uh, a Ring Central account for a year, free of charge, and then of course they're going to go into the running for a um, for for the big big prize. That's I guess it's like a, almost a five thousand dollar value with some additional services. So if you're interested in this and uh, want a chance at winning, just email me geeknews at gmail dot com, geeknews at gmail dot com. I'll remind all of you to set your Wi-Fi SSID tags to geeknewscentral dot com. And also, for those of you that are supporting the show financially, uh, you, you're going to be getting your first Geek News Central Insider this weekend. So I, I look forward to uh, sending that out. It's going to be absolutely 100% private, only to those that are supporting the show. And if you're, if you're considering supporting the show, you can do that by going to the second column of the website and you see Geek News Central Supporter. Um, go ahead and click on that link, and that will get you in to, uh, to uh, essentially – um, get the Geek News Central Insider, and I'll cover a lot more stuff about what happened in the previous week and the information we had uh, gotten out of NAB from the folks that were there. Um, what else have I got on my list here? Yep, I think that's it. Hey, if you haven't checked us out on Roku, I go ahead and add the Blueberry channel to uh, Roku, and we're going to your Roku device. We're going to be adding a lot more shows over the weekend. So it's going to grow from 220 shows to probably close to 1,000 very quickly. So make sure you do that. And uh, if you haven't tried Boxy out, you can download that and check out the TPN app as well. So uh, look forward to uh, additionally, additional announcements here in the very near future. Looks like also that I'm going to be going out to Ford. Uh, I got a received an invitation uh, by Ford Motor Company to come out to their – come out to De uh, Dearborn – on I guess 19th of May, something like that, and uh, they're going to bring me in. And I guess I don't know if there's anybody, how many other bloggers or podcasters are coming, but they're going to have us in, and basically we're going to be able to tour their plant and to get some uh, access to some exclusive areas. So uh, it's a reach out by Ford, and we're going to uh, go ahead and, and accept their offer to come out to uh, Dearborn and do a tour. And so we'll be talking about that as uh, as I get the details. Um, on uh, on heading out to uh, to Michigan for that, I may even try to tie that into a visit to see uh, Ma, and she's in Southern Michigan, so try to see her at the same time when I when I fly out there for that. Uh, we've got a Lenovo Think Center A63. We're going to be giving away in future shows, so make sure you stay tuned to that. Also, I want to give away a Roku tonight. So if you are listening to the show and you can respond before uh, Monday's show. Um, actually, let's go ahead and make it, since I'm recording late, and most of you, some of you won't get the show until Monday, we'll extend the giveaway until Thursday. And, uh, you know, just email Roku giveaway. Tell me why you want it. Just doesn't, you know, or what you think what we're doing. Just comment about what we're doing and going into these devices. Uh, these set-top boxes, or as the industry calls them, over-the-top TV or OTT. Um, and just let me know what you think what we're doing there. And uh, on a week from uh, Thursday... Or a week this following Thursday, we will give away a Roku to a to a listener of the show, and uh, that way you guys will be able to sample the content uh, from this show and others uh, on the device. Okay, let me go ahead and look, and make sure I've got all my stuff covered here. I've covered a lot of territory here, real quickly, and I think that's 
it. Oh, I didn't uh, mention wife is doing fine. She's okay. I talked about her going in for procedure and staying overnight. She's she's fine. She's doing great. Just talked to her on the phone about five minutes ago. She's uh, picking the kids up. So she's really susceptible to um, uh, going uh, under being gassed. And the procedure they had to do to her was uh, required to uh, basically to gas her for uh, the procedure. And she was really groggy when she came out of that. So the uh, just as a safe side, they kept her overnight as a on a observatory purpose. So um, that's kind of what happened there. Okay, let me see here. Let me go ahead and look at the list. I think that's it. Let's take care of a little business here before we get into the regular content. Hey, if you're looking for a domain name, dedicated server, virtual dedicated server, check out GoDaddy.com. Matter of fact, I've got a cool video I'm going to be embedding um, into tonight's show. Um, you'll find it if you want. Basically, if you are a subscriber to the video podcast, you'll see the video at the end of the show as kind of bonus material. And I'll try to put it up on the website as a one-off link to it as well. Uh, definitely check it out. It's a, a link to a pretty cool uh, announcement and uh, information from GoDaddy, some promotional stuff. So check that out. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for a dedicated server, virtual dedicated server, shared hosting account, GoDaddy really is the place to go. And I can save you a lot of money by going over to GoDaddy and picking up one of their, uh, using one of my promotional codes. And actually, let me go ahead and switch this page on here and take that off. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if you basically go to the second column of the website, you will see a link to basically GoDaddy codes. And it's down here in this area right here for those of you watching on Ustream. But uh, if you use the promo code COMSALE, $7.49 on .coms, Todd will save you 10% on uh, non-domain orders. Geek5 will save you 15% on any order $20 or more. Geek will save you $5 off any order of $30 or more. One of, the, one of them that's really, really popular right now is the Aloha Code, A-L-O-H-A. $20 off on any order of $75 or more. And, of course, one of our other most popular codes is Todd20. will save you 20% on a one-year shared hosting account at GoDaddy.com. So thanks for GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at, uh, at Geek News Central. Along with that, of course, uh, great product, GoToMeeting. Just absolutely love using this uh, this product. Matter of fact, I was using the GoToMeeting, um, the iPad app, um, the Citrix iPad app, at, and it was really uh, pretty handy to use that as well. But, you know, anytime I can avoid getting my car, or getting on an airplane to fly somewhere, I do. And that's why I have been using GoToMeeting to hold my meetings online instead of wasting time and money sitting in traffic or on an airplane. GoToMeeting, brought to you by my friends at Citrix, is the easiest, most secure way to hold an online meeting. Uh, you know, we have found during doing uh, roundtables and different presentations, even if the individual has something to show me and they've never used a product before, really you can make someone a presenter by just doing a little click on a button to a, a menu item. And... It takes no training to run uh, run Go Meeting. I don't know if I would get in trouble with the folks at uh, that sell the car insurance. But, but yes, even a caveman could do it. It's that easy. <laughs> I'm sure I just violated somebody's trademark or <laughs> messaging. But uh, you know, they see your computer. You can see theirs if they so chose to show it to you. Um, it's great for sales presentations, training sessions, product demos. You name it. And really, it's affordable. $49 a month, you can hold as many meetings as you want. And what's cool, within a company, in the office, you know, share that username, password, log in, you know, do, the, uh, uh, do different demos, and uh, it's really perfect. perfect. It even includes phone and voice over IP. So again, my listeners can get GoToMeeting free for 30 days. That's a month of online, unlimited meetings free for, the, for this special offer. Visit gotomeeting.com slash techpodcast. That's gotomeeting.com slash techpodcast for your free 30-day demo. Thanks for GoDaddy for being a, a gotomeeting for being a sponsor here at Geek News Central. All right, before I bust into the regular content, I want to show all of the um, – what I want to do. I do want to do this early so those of you that are not uh, normally watching the video podcast, we are at about 19 minutes and 48 seconds. Um, for those of you listening on audio, if you want to load the video up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the uh, the iPhone app submissions. 
Okay, so we've had an iPhone app contest running. I've asked for design submissions to uh, have come in. They're basically, everyone's got their uh, submissions in. I'm going to run through these really uh, quick. And the first one I'm going to show you is by, uh, is by Tom over at the Foggy Podcast. And he has got uh, an app design that uh, I, I like. I really do. Um, there's, an, there's really, all of them are great. I'll let you guys look through all, all three choices. I'll, I'll provide some screenshots uh, um, in a zip file I'm going to make, uh, make available to be downloadable. I'm not going to show you all their write-ups because I kind of consider that a little bit proprietary. But basically, he's got it here set up so that uh, individuals can read the blog. Then they can, uh, let's see if I can bring this over, look at the podcast. And then that links to the either the audio or video podcast so that you can uh, listen or watch. We got a, he's got a Twitter interface in here so that you can see the recent tweets that I have made. And then what I think is really cool is he's got an area that's called Contact uh, GNC. He's got a section where you can click on the, um, on, the, uh, on the link. You can email a comment to the show. He's even got a, a recording device in here so you can record an audio comment and have it sent immediately uh, via email to me. He's got uh, several different uh, uh, website links, GNC website via Safari, GNC on Facebook, uh, GNC on Twitter, and then a, a link to where in the world is Todd. So it's a pretty cool um, app. So um, again, blog, podcast section, a Twitter section, a contact section where you can actually record an audio comment, all in a very simple to use um, interface. The next submission comes from a, one of our longtime uh, listeners of the show. This is Sam out in uh, in Albuquerque, and he's got it. So when you load the app up, boom, you can you can immediately hit play, and and uh, and listen to uh, the show. Or there's a oops, I hate it when that does that. I didn't push the. Uh, I was trying to make this so I, everyone else could see it here. <laughs> And it uh, helps if you watch what you're doing with the mouse. But uh, then there's a link to be able to so, show, uh, see the show notes and actually uh, read the blog information as well. Um, details here on how you could actually um, submit a uh, – subscribe to the email via the, uh, via the app itself. So he's got some pretty good features here. It's basically contact, newsletter, episodes, and show notes. Uh, the only thing I don't see, Sam, in here is how you're going to bring in uh, both the audio and the video. Uh, there's three feeds for the show. There's audio, video, and a special media feed. So I'm not sure how you've got that broken in there. But I like the design as well. Very clean, very easy to use. So, um, again, we'll have some pictures of these um, available for everyone to take a look at. We're going to vote on these. So you're going to have to start sending in your emails basically to geeknews at gmail.com and, and letting me know which design you, you like the best. And I'll have that information in the show notes available where you can actually look at it. Um, the last one, let me see, to bring this up in a Word document here, um, is the, basically there's a – change the zoom on this. Okay, that's good. You've got the app logo. And then you've got the ability to look at the audio, video, or special media feed. Then he has this uh, link in there to be able to look at the Twitter, the latest Twitter announcements. And then you've got the availability to send an email and leave voicemail. Now, I don't know what happens when he clicks on or when someone would click on the leave voicemail. Oh, it says a button to call your voicemail line. So this would actually link, uh, dial the actual uh, voicemail hotline. And you'd actually be able to use your telephone to to leave a voicemail. But he also breaks it down where you can see the blog and audio feed, um, show notes, and then, of course, the player that would come up. So all this is pretty much some, you know, a lot of similar functionality here to, uh, to the other apps. So I think the best thing I can do is you know, provide you guys some screenshots to look at in a download. And then you guys vote on it. You guys tell me which app you like the best or best submission. And then I will um, uh, take probably votes for a week. And um, let's see here. The last submission was by – let me actually bring up the email here. So I make sure I've got everyone credit where credit is due. I believe it was from Ryan. Let me look at the name. 
Oh, boy. Let's see here. Who, it was from Jason. Actually, Jason Clara. So we got Sam, and then we also have um, uh, Tom from Fogview Podcast. So three entries. And I, the way I showed them to you guys was Tom, Sam, and Jason. And uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get those out and have a link. You guys can all take a look. Vote on them. Tell me which app you like the best and the app that is uh, voted upon the most favorably. We will hire the developer to produce the iPhone app for the Geek News Central podcast. Oh, great. Let me go ahead here and um, switch back to regular content. That's what you guys all came for. And as expected, I figured the room would be, uh, the uh, uh, show would be pretty long tonight. Let's see here. I bring up. Actually, I'm using uh, Firefox tonight. I was kind of uh, out of my element, having not done a show in a week, and uh, started loading stuff up in Firefox. But so far, it's uh, it's holding tight. All right, news out of uh, news news and rumor front today uh, over at arstetnica.com. Uh, there's a report that uh, AMD and Apple may be in talks. The rumor du jour is that everyone's favorite tablet maker is considering AMD for a spot in the Mac lineup. The folks over at Apple Insider allege that AMD execs have been pitching Apple on the chipmaker's upcoming product roadmap, and the two parties are in advanced discussion about putting AMD in some Apple products. This would be big. This would be a big coup by AMD if they were able to do that. Now, it would be interesting to see how that fits in with the strategy in that Intel has really been, you know, king of the hill performance-wise, and they've really invested heavily in the Intel infrastructure for for Mac. So we'll see what, what happens with this. I um, don't know how much of a adoption phase there is, but we'll see if any rumor or anything develops from this over the next uh, couple of weeks. All right, there's an iPhone OS 4 jailbreak available. Enables multitasking on 3G. Now, what I find funny here is that the iPhone 4.0 beta, which I guess has been available to, to just devs only uh, and is set to ship later this summer, and has already been jailbroken. The iPhone dev team has released a preliminary beta of the, of the jailbreaking 2, and they're saying it's not for the casual jailbreaker. So we'll see what happens here. So they're, if you have got a hold of the iPhone OS 4 beta <laughs> and you want to jailbreak it, uh, hey, knock yourself out. It's a, I guess it's available. So uh, I'll have the link up to this in the show notes for you. One thing that's been, you know, I heard a discussion on earlier in the week. I was actually reading online. It's uh, basically how there's this big battle going on right now, uh, really with uh, in open source. And there's been some development where uh, essentially uh, – a lot of companies are using open source applications, right? Using Apple's open source source code in in a in devices in different applications, and really not applying the because within open source specifically, um, uh, most of the licenses are under GPL, and GPL has specific requirements for licensing if someone uses some of the code, so. What's been released is a binary analysis tool to find, uh, essentially, open source code in device firmware. Then they, what they're recommending is that uh, this be a tool to find, uh, to find GPL violators and as a way to shaming them or even litigating against them to make sure that they – um, set the specific licensing for their hardware code if they're using any open source software. So I think this is pretty cool that they've actually developed a tool, a, a binary analysis tool, to detect Linux and BusyBox and binary firmware. And the program is uh, freely available for download and is intended to aid open source license compliance efforts. So pretty cool on that front. Well, this this botnet called Zeus Z-E-U-S, uh, there's a report out that up to 88% of Fortune 500 companies have been affected by the Zeus Trojan. And this was done by a firm called the RSA Fraud Action Anti-Trojan Division. Uh, so RSA's Fraud Action Anti-Trojan Division. Um, what, this, uh, what this Trojan does, installs keystroke loggers and steals login credentials 
to banking, social networking, and email accounts. The bot has uh, botnet's been around since 2007. It's still uh, proliferating today. But what's amazing here is that the number of machines that continue to uh, they get infected. Now, the malware itself is primarily being attacking Windows XP machines, although Windows Vista and Windows 7 variants are, are for sale and available too. So um, if you're part of a big company or even a small company that have a number of computers, you may want to you know really take a look at your infrastructures and make sure that you're looking for about uh, malware or trojans like this. Uh, if 88 percent of Fortune 500 companies have been affected, you can be rest assured that m a lot of small companies have as well. There's a very interesting report out by ABI Research, and uh, this is a little heavy reading for all of you. And this has been dissected by a number of websites today. But Verizon Wireless, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile were analyzed. And, of course, with, uh, with AT&T taking the brunt of criticism in 2009 and AT&T basically saying, well, in large, fault, large part, the fault was actually on the iPhone, that their networks were fine. What this research has found is that AT&T isn't actually moving the most data across their network. Um, so they went through and measured and did some you know, basic validating of how much data each of, each of the uh, specific networks were using and um, really kind of found that even though AT&T says that the devices are using an extraordinary amount of network uh, resources, uh, companies like Sprint and Verizon are actually moving more content through their mobile networks than AT&T is. And I would believe that. I've never, I've never seen anybody with an AT&T mobile card. And when I ever see someone, I'll always ask. And I get around a lot. You guys know I travel. I ask what kind of a, of a mobile card you're using. You know, nine out of 10 times, it's either a Verizon or a Sprint mobile card. So, um, so I'm not surprised by this. Uh, factors qualified as contributing to mobile data traffic levels included total data devices by operator, Total data activated devices by operator, that's the saying the same thing, includes total data devices by operator, or total data activated de devices by operator, and total data consumption by device type by operator. So they looked at handsets, they looked at mobile devices, look all kinds of different, uh, they measure things up, but essentially they don't know if AT&T network is as savvy as they say it is. Now, AT&T has responded significantly to this, saying that the data results are flawed. But ABI Research is pretty well known. Uh, they are not a company to put out data that would make, uh, uh, you know, not be backed up by a lot of facts. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't know if you can actually purchase, I think actually purchased the full report, but there is a... Um, a small subset of information available about it, and then I've got some coverage from some supporting sites that have actually read the whole document. So I'll get that out to you um, in the show notes. All right, Congress has a call to action to outlaw caller ID spoofing, and in fact, the House has passed the Truth and Caller ID Act of 2010, and really what it does, it becomes illegal to cause any caller ID service to transmit misleading or inaccurate caller ID information with the intent to defraud or deceive. The bill maintains exempt exemption for blocking one's own outgoing caller ID and law enforcement isn't affected. So, you know, you, you get calls to say blocked. Uh, you can still block outgoing calls from you basically, basically, so when you call someone, your caller ID doesn't show up. Um, law enforcement can still block their number Really, when I get a call that says blocked, I don't even answer it. Um, I just let it go to voicemail. So if you're blocking your number when you call me, just prepare it. I'm there. I will not answer the phone. I just don't um, because usually it's a salesman trying to sell me something. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me that bad, you'll, you know, I publicly put my telephone number on the web. I don't, uh, you know, call people on the whim because I've got your number. But uh, definitely don't block your your number when you when you dial dial me and you call and the number of you have and you've left voicemails and I wish I would have been able to respond quicker but um, it's just a policy I have but anyway at least it's going to make it punishable 
for those that uh, are basically trying to scam us, uh, another way to strike back. How enforceable it is, I don't know. All right, BBC News is reporting that Europe is preparing to – oops, let me uh, actually bring this up on – wasn't ready to do that. Let me go ahead and paste and go. Europe is preparing to ship its second ATV space freighter. Uh, Europe's next space truck is nearly ready. And uh, right now, they're under contract to provide at least five uh, space freighters or space trucks. And um, with the ISS mission being extended now to 2020 at least, uh, they're talking about contracts for more. But uh, this is pretty exciting. This, uh, the freighters can take more than six tons of fuel, air, and food and equipment to the orbiting outpost and acting as a temporary storage room on the back of the platform. Uh, this is a pretty good article here because they went into uh, what they, you know, what they really found out during uh, the the first uh, ATV that made it to, up to the International Space Station, and what they found is because the uh, the freighter is really docked at uh, the far end of the International Space Station, it's actually the quietest area, and some it was reported that some of the Russian cosmonauts actually slept in the in the freighter when they initially emptied it. But uh, they were very quick to announce in this article that uh, the freighter itself does not have the same radiation shielding as the rest, rest of the International Space Station does. So really sleeping in there probably was not a good idea for your rad count. <laughs> but uh, they plan to launch this in November. And, of course, it will be an equatorial launch. Um, I believe the French are the ones that are actually – it's going to go up on Ariane 5. So we go to uh, French Guiana, and uh, the rest of it will be assembled there. But uh, look for a no November launch, December delivery at the uh, International Space Station. Of course, they'll fill that thing full of garbage and then uh, punch it back, and it'll burn up in it during its, uh, its deorbit. They also say that they may be contracted to make one ATV that is going to be used specifically um, whenever the International Space Station has ended, uh, reached its end of life to actually deorbit the ISS. Does that just make you kind of scratch your head a little bit? Why would you deorbit the ISS? Okay, you get to a certain point. You, we've lifted all that hardware up there. It's in space, okay? Obviously, we're going to be running the space station for at least, you know, what, another, another 10 years. But we know the Russians' space uh, lab was really, at a certain point, got to be hodgepodge and wires put together. Maybe we'll get to that same way with the International Space Station, but um, it doesn't make sense for me to deorbit that that big of a, a structure in space. It seems like there could be some reutilization of some of the stuff on other projects, but you know, half the battle is lifting this stuff in, up into space, but I guess they don't think that way. But anyway, they may make one ATV to deorbit the ISS at the end of its life. Speaking of the space... Uh, the president has called on NASA to focus on trips to Mars and beyond. He, uh, the president laid out yesterday to NASA that they would like to focus them on going to having a, uh, a mission to an asteroid. Why would we send astronauts to an asteroid when we can send remote-controlled vehicles to asteroids? I don't get that one. But anyway, they, he says by 2030... Uh, the goal would be to put uh, man in orbit around Mars, proving that we can get there, and then uh, sometime in 2030 putting a crew on Mars itself. So um, they want to, by early next decade, a uh, set of crewed flights. So what has happened here is part of the um, plan to scrap some of the stuff NASA had planned has been put on the back burner, and it's, got, it's barely hanging on by a life string. And they think that uh, the reason the president kind of backed down on some of his plans was that he had received a lot of criticism, criticism for it. Um, but the budget now is going to have NASA concentrated on developing next-generation engines for commercially built spacecraft, in-space fuel depots, and robots. So uh, we'll see what happens uh, as part of the Constellation program will continue. Uh, I don't know exactly what pieces, uh, but, of course, uh, 
politicians on both sides of the fence are uh, speaking critically of the plan, which is kind of surprising. But uh, we'll see what happens uh, with the uh, ongoing development and the fallout from his uh, decision. So we'll see where it goes there. All right, did you guys know that Intel at this point is not supporting USB 3.0 on its chipsets? And I was pretty surprised to hear that. Now, companies that are bu building new motherboards uh, are obviously putting it internally on their own boards. But Intel, uh, I don't know if this is a play by Intel for light peak technology. If you guys remember when I went to CES, we talked to Intel about light peak and they demonstrated it for us and they were very clear that the, you know they're not in the uh, position to to do a uh, setting policy on light peak they want it to be a you know something that is going to be a uh, discussions generated within the industry but if intel is not going to support usb 3.0 it's obvious to me that it looks like they're ready to shove uh light peak technology down the throats of everybody one way or the other um the folks at gigabyte azus etc have adopted 3.0 USB 3.0 on theirs on their motherboards and uh, chipsets. So you know, in, just so you guys you guys know this, and so some of you aren't as technical. Well, Intel makes um, the processors that are inside our computers. They also make chipsets that go on the uh, the motherboards of our computers that do a variety of different applications. So I'm sure most of you knew that. But just in case it didn't, the USB 3.0 spec has to be offboarded onto a different chip. So we'll see what happens with this. But, um, you know, I think one disadvantage of Lightpeak, even though I think it's pretty attractive, is that Lightpeak cannot power devices. And that's one distinct advantage that USB has. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you, you know, where are you guys coming down on the uh, decision point on this? Do you guys think Lightpeak, from what you've been told by me and others, is the way things should go, or do you think USB 3.0 is with, is going to give you a theoretically a three times increase in uh, speed of transfer between devices? Um, at least at this point, that's theoretically what they think they're going to get out of it from USB 2.0 to USB 3.0 standards. So, uh, you know, which way? I like the Light Peak because it uh, uh, is definitely speedier, but at the same time, I understand that adoption of USB 3.0 will probably be pretty wide. Now, there's an article on CNN, and I just thought this was a total puff piece. I just wanted to, to talk to you about it. Many of you in the UK are now suffering, of course, from the, uh, the volcanic eruption that happened in Norway. And not Norway. <laughs> um, I'm pulling a brain fart here. Well, anyway, Norway's prime minister found him stuck in New York as a volcanic cloud that basically gr uh, grounded flights in Europe. And uh, he fired up his new Apple iPad, according to CNN, and did the job remotely of running his country. <laughs> if you're the prime minister of a country or the president of a country, do you think really and honestly you're going to be able to run the country via your iPad? First of all, you probably have a whole staff of people that have laptops that are connected to critical government uh, communication systems, uh, secure uh, email, secure telephones. And if they really think that this article where they're saying that the stranded leader is running his country by iPad, who did, who did Apple pay to write this? They say it's very normal for the prime minister to travel abroad, so this is not different from other travels. It's just last some days more than expected. We have the internet, the mobile phones, and an iPad, which is excellent. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah. Okay, he's running the country with his iPad. Gotcha. Uh, I wonder how much uh, Apple contributed to his uh, re-election fund in his country. All right, Twitter gives a lowdown on its new business model. And, uh, wow, well, I think we all knew this was coming. And uh, so, really, sponsors, why, why am I getting feedback? Is that coming from that phone? Let me move it over here. Um, basically, companies can sponsor uh, searches, tweet searches. In other words, if you go in and search for 
uh, CNN or Fox or somebody like that, you'll basically the first tweets in the list of the search results will be that company. And the second will be commercial accounts where you can get analytics on uh, how the uh, click-throughs have been. You can already do that. There's a lot of great stats you can get uh, through third-party services already with Twitter, so I don't know why they think companies would just pay uh, Twitter directly for that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I guess commercial accounts are in beta testing, so be watching your searches. If you guys capture one of these paid Twitter searches, uh, send me a screen capture of it. I'd love to see how it's formatted and, and what it looks like. Of course, there's some, been some announcement, of course, with, additionally with Twitter on some new API developments, which are pretty exciting in that you'll be able to have – they're in, essentially introducing what's called a namespace. And imagine me being able to put um, – a namespace that would be uh, podcast equals or some sort of a tag that would drive um, a link onto the Twitter post so that you could actually uh, have a direct link to the uh, to specific information. Um, so anyway, namespaces are coming, so that's going to be cool. And the implementation of that is going to be uh, probably a fierce battle uh, and uh, people trying to race to capture namespaces, but we'll see how they – how they implement it in their SDK. All right, the MPAA and the RIAA doesn't uh, doesn't take too long for them to be all the news in order to uh, want to rile people up a little bit by announcing some new new anti piracy measures. Movie companies and recording companies. Let me actually flip this over. This is over at uh, tgdaily.com, and I'll bring this up in the uh, in the browser for you. I forget I put, don't have that up. Um. What they are saying is that uh, the Motion Picture Association of America and the Recording Industry Association of America have submitted a series of requests to the Office of Intellectual Property Enforcement. They want spyware to be installed on all computers to detect and delete pirate. Of course, you guys are seeing the ad on, on Ustream. They want spyware to be forcibly installed or pre-installed on any computer to detect and delete pirated material. Wow. They really want this to happen. They want technology to detect and monitor filter traffic or specific files based on analysis of information such as protocols, file types, text descriptions, metadata, file size, and so on, as well as content recognition technologies such as digital hashes, watermark detection, and fingerprinting technologies. They want current regulations for allowing the blocking of offending sites to be excluded to allow permanent bans for repeat offenders. <laughs> Okay, well, I wonder how far they're going to get with this one. We'll keep an eye out for you. We'll keep you informed. All right, next article up. Hey, if you uh, get an app rejected from the Apple Store, all you have to do to receive an invitation back to the Apple Store is to win a Pulitzer Prize. Um, a few months ago, we talked about a cartoonist, a political satir uh, satirist, <laughs> that... Uh, his store, his his uh, satire, satirist. <laughs> he had uh, submitted his uh, app, basically cartoons, and he had just you know the, he's doing puns on government officials, and uh, Apple rejected it because it was too political. Well, this guy's won the Pulitzer Prize, <laughs> a, a Pulitzer Prize, and now Apple has uh, sent him an email saying, "Hey, we want you back. Come on, you can." We'll take your app now. And he went on to say, I feel kind of guilty. He, uh, Fior told the journal, I'm getting preferential treatment just because I got the Pulitzer. Uh, to be fair, it's probably more directly the public attention than the Pulitzer itself that caught Apple's eyes. But the honor no devout is illustrated the validity of satirical work in the eyes of the real, work, real world, the eyes that is outside of Apple's carefully guarded walls. So, yeah, if you have your Apple uh, app rejected, all you have to do is win something big uh, like a Pulitzer to, uh, you know, to be considered to have your app re, uh, uh, approved in the App Store. <laughs> um, there's a lot of – I got an email about a week ago from a company saying that, they, hey, hey, Todd, this is big news. We're announcing a, 
um, basically uh, uh, malware, tro anti-malware, Trojan detection, and virus detection for the Mac. It was a brand new app that was or being uh, brand new software that was being introduced by the Mac. And I kind of like, eh, I don't want to talk about that because generally Mac users say, I don't need that stuff. I don't need to load it. But there's an article about PC World that is talking about Apple fans. Well, actually, this is a commentary by a gentleman by the name of Mark Mafriette. He's chief security architect at security firm FireEye. And I don't know if they make software or not. But uh, he says Apple fans are clueless about security. He says not only are Apple fans misguided about the Mac security, but Apple doesn't take security as seriously as Microsoft according to this specific expert. So I'll have this link up in the show notes, and I know this is probably going to raise a lot of eyebrows, but um, in an interview done by CNET, he claimed that Microsoft takes security more seriously than does Apple, and that Apple fans are being ignorant about security risk. And uh, he says that he believes Microsoft does one of the best jobs in the industry around security. As for Apple and its fans, he has very little good to say saying that the mac is vulnerable and its fans ignorant about security risks what do you guys think what do you mac users think uh let me know love to hear your feedback geeknews at gmail.com voicemail hotline at 619-342-7365 all right this nine-year-old uh out in virginia actually fairfax county public school district is uh, not real happy about a third grader because uh, he was smart enough to hack into the Blackboard learning system used by the county school system, and he changed teachers' and staff members' passwords. He uh, was able to change or delete course content. He could have, oh, he could have changed or deleted content. And uh, one of the victims, I guess, was Fairfax Superintendent Jack D. Dale. So imagine, here's this nine-year-old third grader who... All of a sudden, in the Blackboard system, become the only uh, third grader to have administrator privileges. And the IP uh, log showed that he'd been uh, wandering around and, uh, you know, going after doing stuff to, you know, like the superintendent. That's a great way to win friends and influence people. But uh, I guess the police decided and school officials decided no harm, no foul. They said the boy did not intend to do any serious damage and didn't do so. So the police withdrew and are allowing the school district to handle the uh, the third grader. <laughs> Which goes to uh, tell you that uh, maybe the folks at Blackboard need to get a handle on their security a little bit. Uh, if a third grader can hack it, imagine what would happen if uh, a fourth grader was able to, uh, to start targeting the device. You guys remember last year, Frontier Communications making a big deal. Of course, we made a big deal of the announcement that Time Warner did about uh, doing uh, bandwidth capping. You guys remember we we just you know we went to battle. And all of you did, especially those of you in the areas uh, that was initially going to be rolled out in Texas. I, you know we did a big battle cry here. We had a lot of uh, commentary about it, and uh, as well did many other publications and folks that were putting out content. But a company called Frontier Communications are now testing. And of course, they were one of the companies that was crying foul about uh, what Time Warner was doing. They were really, oh, this is horrible what they're doing, and this is, should not be allowed, and so forth. But according to a letter being sent to Frontier users in Minnesota, users who consume more than 100 gigs a month are going to automatically have their bills bumped to $99 a month. And users who consume more than 250 gigs a month are having their bills bumped to a staggering $250 a month. Users who don't respond within 15 days get their service disconnected. And uh, But again, this is a company that is in one of these areas that has no competition. Uh, they have invested almost nothing. It is reported that they have invested almost nothing in their network services. And that right now, the average user of their service gets a maximum capacity of about three megs per second. So, uh, wow, after criticizing Time Warner, and now they're going to impose caps and uh, essentially, well, they're not imposing caps, they're just putting a rate increase uh, as a way to overcome, you know, 
threaten people with a bigger bill to uh, lower the amount of usage so that their network can consider, continue to survive without investing money. Uh, are you a frontier internet user that listens to this show? I'd love to hear from you. I really, really would. Let me know what you think. Send me a copy of that, uh, of that mail that you got. Or fa you know, scan it and fax it to me. Or you know, email it to me. Uh, geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline 619-342-7365. All right, I've always told you guys, be careful where you post your content. Be careful where you build your communities. Be careful about protecting your own brand. Because you never know when someone is going to make a change in their service policies that is going to affect you negatively. Ning has announced to its 2.3 million network users that they are going to make you start paying. Uh, we've had a good response uh, at Geek News Central in the article that was written by one of our uh, contributing bloggers. And uh, But if you don't pay up, your public site is going to disappear. Uh, the uh, CEO of the company, in an email to 40% uh, reduced staff, uh, told his uh, company that they're going to focus completely on premium offerings. You don't pay, you don't play. So what you got to pay now is the service offerings includes faster access to Ning support staff, $10 to $100 per month, depending on responsiveness, custom domains at $5 per month, additional storage and bandwidth at $10 per month, removal of ads with the option to bed your own at $25 per month, and get rid of the link at, at the bottom of every page that asks users to create their own social network is an additional. $25 a month. So if you add that all up, 25, 25, they're 50, plus 10 is 60, plus another $5 is $65, plus at least 10. It looks to me that if you want to uh, basically uh, utilize all of the services that they're going to make available as a premium service, 75 bucks a month, or you don't play at all, or maybe as little as $10 a month. Uh, I never set up a Ning network. Because another walled garden, you can't build a community there without uh, risk of something like this happening. I'm telling you guys, set your own destiny by creating your own brand. Set up your own domain name. Set up your own website. There are so many different, different plugins, different applications that you can use, forums, software, you name it. Uh, control your own destiny. Don't... Uh, don't rely on some company that's going to charge you more than what it would cost for a dedicated server every month to run a community website. So we'll see. You know, this is, again, just like, uh, you know, Tripod, MEM. Those companies before changed the rules on you mid-place. Do you have a Ning network? Do you have a Ning site? Are you affected by this? Are you going to pay? Love to hear from you. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline 619-342. 7365. Really, just let me know. Let me know what uh, what your thoughts on this. Okay, a couple quick space articles. No additional spacewalk needed for International Space Station repairs. Uh, NASA managers decided late Wednesday they would not perform an additional spacewalk on the current shuttle mission to the ISS to report a faulty valve that they found in uh, space the uh, third excursion. So they say they're going to analyze and uh, figure out what the fix is, and then they'll use the uh, astronauts on board ISS to um, to do the fix at a later date. Now, you're getting ready to buy a two terabyte hard drive. You want a roundup of what is good and what's bad, what uh, speeds. There is a great, absolutely great article over at uh, hothardware.com, and uh, they have really put to task. I think how many how many hard drives did they actually test here? Let me look. One, two, three, five, ten different hard drives. From it looks like maybe three, one, two, three, three different manufacturers. Um, yeah, they did. No, they who was it? it? Was actually Samsung, Seagate, and Western Digital. So they did a shootout of these, and uh, you can get a full blown rundown on speeds, pricing. Uh, you know, the whole nine yards is a multi page article. But they ran over 250 tests on each drive, and they're going to basically lay out which one was the best. So if you're getting ready to uh, to jump up to a 2-terabyte drive, definitely check out the article at hothardware.com. There's an article running Gadget, and uh, being going to be going out to Ford 
I got to get educated on their products and services a lot more before I'm there before I so I'm able to ask the you know the questions that need to be asked the tough questions and that's what I want you guys to want you guys start thinking about questions I can ask Ford executives uh, in relation to their cars their Ford sync their technology uh, because you know I'm all about transparency and asking the hard questions. It's not all about going out there and giving Ford a free reign to do a big uh, PR pitch. But uh, if you have questions you want asked of the Ford uh, hierarchy, uh, when I do my trip in May, this is going to be a great time for you guys to you know, have me ask hard questions and get direct answers. Uh, if they allow me to bring a camera, we'll be filming as much as I – basically, I'll be filming as much as I can. And uh, so we'll see what happens. But anyway – Ford has been slowly but surely tweaking its uh, Ford, my Ford Touch, its interface for months, and uh, people are pretty happy with the uh, with the new features. And what I think is kind of cool about this, and I wish my GPS did this, was it actually shows you which route is the most economical, aka economical to drive as far as fuel efficiency. And uh, it also tells you my now my GPS tells me how much longer it takes to go one route, but not multiple routes so uh pretty cool stuff but i have this link up in the show notes any of you using this my ford touch in your vehicles i don't even know which cars it comes in so i have to get some up to speed on that as well but uh anyway pretty cool that uh, it's about time you know this technology helps us save money and, and be more efficient all right pretty spectacular um solar flare and this is the biggest one in the last 15 years and Wait till you guys see the video on this. This is really, really cool. Let me see if I can bring it up in the uh, uh, in the system here. And uh, we'll switch over. And I'm going to play this for those of you on Ustream. But it's a time-lapse video. of, And I guess, oh, this is, looks like it's over on Vimeo. So you see this huge solar flare coming off the top of the, uh, top of the sun. And just, oh, man, it just explodes out. And uh, the uh, NASA said that it's it's a 50 million mile arch uh, is how big this is solar flare was, and it's the biggest one that they've seen in over 15 years. So pretty cool stuff um, on the NASA side. But uh, they say that the you could have put like 200 or 126 Earths into the arch. <laughs> so uh, that gives you some perspective as for size. Um, got some more pictures for you, some pretty remarkable space pictures. I haven't seen uh, these specific ones before. I have this linked up in the show notes for you. But I I have to uh, commend Sprint for basically um, putting together an iPad case that uh, I, I, I kind of got a chuckle out of. Um, Sprint is offering a specialized iPad case made to carry both the tablet and a wireless hotspot. So it's available either a uh, flat top folio or sleeve design. The 4G case, as they're calling it, is offers a padded main compartment for the iPad as well as a dedicated pocket for the Sprint Overdrive 3G, 4G mobile hotspot, which allows up to five Wi-Fi-enabled devices to simultaneously connect to the company's wireless data network. So I think this is pretty cool. You basically, you know, that's, that's you know, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you know, you're hosed. But... You know, I really have thought at some point maybe I would buy one of those portable hotspots in placement of my uh, USB stick, and the performance is probably going to be very comparable. Um, but, you know, then I would be guaranteed to have Wi-Fi connectivity nowhere, anywhere I was at with my device. Now, they've been playing, of course, using Windows 7 and using uh, Windows 7 as a hotspot, and that worked out works really well. Uh, basically, I have my Sprint uh, mobile device or my Verizon mobile device plugged into a USB port. And using Connectify, I can actually set up a virtual Wi-Fi hub with my, uh, with my laptop. And uh, that works okay. It's, um, it's not as fast, I don't think, as being connected to a Wi-Fi device directly. But for checking email or doing some basic uh, surfing of email, it works really good for those of you that have Windows 7 machines. So if you've got a Windows 7 laptop, in your traveling. And I don't know if Mac users can do this or not, but you can set up again that virtual Wi Fi hotspot using Connectify. And wherever your laptop's at, long as it's on, you can use your iPad. But it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? But the again, this uh this three G, four G mobile hotspot is pure brilliance on Sprint's part. 
and uh, makes me think, hmm, this is a way to guarantee connectivity and not up, have to buy an iPad with 3G in it when it comes out now, according to uh, Apple, in May. All right, fellas and ladies, if you're out there visiting uh, adult video sites, be forewarned. Um, apparently, a new type of malware infects PCs using file share sites and publishes the user's net history on a public website before demanding a fee for its removal. The Japanese Trojan virus installs itself on computers using a popular file sharing service called Winnie. I guess this is probably a file sharing service that Japanese use by or it's used up by uh, used up to used by up to 200 million people. And it targets those downloading illegal copies of games in the hentai genre, an, experiment, an explicit form of anime. Uh, website Yomori claims that 5,500 people have so far admitted to being affected and have had to pay the 1,500 yen bounty to uh, basically get your uh, information off a public website. Imagine a Trojan publishing your web surfing history. And this, of course, right now applies to pretty much those in Japan, but imagine they doing that model against us here in the United States or any other, anywhere else and publishing publicly publishing your web history and make you go, hmm, maybe it's something, you know, I think web your web history is, is about as private as you can get and uh, especially your search terms and everything else. They can, boy, people, can you imagine what people could really find out about you in a hurry? Um, scary, scary stuff. But uh, I bet you those Japanese guys were, or ladies were very much willing to pay the uh, 1,500 yen to get the uh, information off the Internet. New York Times got a good article on buying a $30 cable to use the iPad on a television. And uh, it's got a pretty good write-up about this. And I I'm definitely going to be doing that as well um, because really it opens up some new viewing possibilities that my Apple TV doesn't provide. So I'm going to have that available or I can buy one of those cables. Anybody done that already? Finally, I got a, a link that's sent over by Andrew, uh, Andrew Darlow. He actually um, sent me some of these sleeves, and I haven't uh, opened the box up. It's here yet. They're, a, they're protective bubble bags, and they're made from the same material, the pop-pop material, um, but they're pretty uh, – I, I guess I know what I'm talking about, the clear, semi-clear plastic that's uh, got bubbles in it, the protective wrap. But it's basically designed as a pouch. You can stick devices in it and used to protect your devices. So I've only got to this in the show notes. You guys can check it out. All right, let me go ahead and get into um, email. There's no voicemails tonight. So, um, yeah, plug it. Hey, 200, 200 million people, it's the entire population of Japan. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> well, that's what the article said, plug it. So I'm just reading the uh, the chat right now. There was no voicemails, so we'll go ahead and get into the email comments, which are a huge number. I got an email from Thomas. He says, hey, Todd, hello from Ohio. Hear you through Mediafly on Squeezebox by Logitech. I am sending this to you on my new iPad. Well, hopefully there, Thomas, we'll be able to very soon allow you to listen to Geek News Central through the uh, tech podcast or Blueberry app on the same box. So... We'll keep you advised, okay? Thanks for being a, a listener. Got an email from DJ. Hey, Todd, just so you're aware, the pop-up player in Geek News Central that plays a video of your podcast hasn't been working for quite a few of the last episodes. Keep up the great work with your show, DJ. DJ, I couldn't duplicate what you're showing me. And is anyone else having an issue with the video? Remember, on the website, the video that you would play is in stream. It's on the website. You won't. It's not designed to pop up. There is an audio pop-up that you can you can play, but there is no video pop-up, okay? Only the audio has a pop-up player. Got an email via Twitter from Steve. He's, hey, congrats on the new distributions. Might give me a reason to buy one. In other words, a.k.a. Roku or start a podcast on my own. I hope you do that. Uh, thanks, for the, thanks for the twit. Um, got an email from Bo. He said, hey, Todd, a lot of non-European people, a lot of non-European people mix Sweden with Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, I'm a knucklehead. Yes, Sweden is in the nor is in northern Europe, and Switzerland is between Germany and Italy. You're right. I'm a knucklehead. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for the clarification, Bo. And uh, I'll keep that straight. Okay, I like you and your show. And if you're a bit confused about the European landscape, 
I knew it. I was just being dumb. Thanks, man. Got an email from Jim. He said, hey, Todd, yeah, yeah. go buy a 3G iPad and, and use all of ATT's 3G. Sent for my iPhone. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, I got an email here from Frank. He sent me a link to waiting for the email to load. Uh, the IT person involved in the webcam gate of that school has invoked his Fifth Amendment rights. So I have a link to that. So the article over on philly.com will be in the listener links. I got an email from uh, Steve. Hey, Ted, I thought I would mention a low-cost solution to fixing the audio buzz you get when hooking up a computer to other audio devices. I use a ground loop isolator from Radio Shack for about 20 bucks. This lets me hook up a PC for streaming Netflix to my home theater system without that annoying buzz. Doing a Google search for a ground loop isolator turns up several links to various products and similar price range, so podcasters on a budget might want to try out one of those low-cost solutions first. These also tend to work well with car audio applications to reduce alter alternator wind. Steve, I'll have that link up in the show notes. Thanks for that, Steve. Um, but yeah, it might be worthy a try for sure. Got an email from um, from Grant. He said, hey, Todd, have you come across this before? And it's an article in Run CNET talking about God mode in Windows 7. I have not, but uh, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Thanks for the link, Grant. Uh, we also have a, one of the one of our fans um, actually uh, working on a widget, or actually a GNC gadget, uh, for Windows 7 users. So hopefully that'll be done here soon. And uh, thanks, Jacob, for his work on that. We'll be uh, letting you know when that's ready. Uh, got an email here from Anders. He says, hey, Todd Walls, so I came across this thing, thought it was great. Totally addictive HTML5 drum kit. So also I want to let you know that I asked the folks from Frame Destinations, and I did. I got those those arrived. They're here. I just haven't looked at them yet. Thanks for all the information on that, Andrew, and thanks for having them send those over. And I'll have a more... Uh, a bigger write-up on it soon. I hear my kids. They just got home. <laughs> got an email from uh, Kelly. And, you know, sometimes PR people are really trying to sneak one through. Uh, hey, Todd, I'm a great big fan of your show. And yet they talk about something that in their email that is not uh, at all associated with the show. Uh, Kelly Please, uh, do your homework. I'm not going to read your email on the air. Don't try to slide one by, okay? Um, if you're really listening to the show, please, you know, say, Todd, I heard you talk about me. And I'll be happy to put stuff up. But it really doesn't look like this is a, you know, looks like you guys, you're just trying to work me a little bit here. So um, if you're listening, I'll be happy to put stuff up, but not until then. Or I got an email from uh, Alan. He said, hey, you asked, a, you asked how do we watch internet TV in our living room, so here's my setup. I bought a used PC and a component-style case to fit in my entertainment cabinet. I upgraded the RAM, the RAM sound card and video card and installed Windows 7 and set Media Center to run on startup. I have a DVI to HDMI cable going to the TV for video and optical audio going to the AV receiver for audio. All of our DVDs, music, and photos are on this PC for video podcasts. I use the Media Browser plugin for Media Center, which downloads the latest episodes of each one. I subscribe to and present for a, a subscribe. And pre, I subscribe to and presents a playlist for me. A Boxy plugin is also available for Media Center, but I don't really have much use for it. I use the Hulu plugin and the Amazon Video plugin. If there's just a plugin for Pandora, I'd be set. But as now, I still have to open Firefox and browse to Pandora. Netflix is a built. Netflix is built into Media Center. Love the show. Been listening back around since the show number fifty or so. Alan in Maryland. Shameless plug. Hey, you guys, check out Alan's website at makingwindowseasy.com. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. You guys, check his site out. Um, got an email here from Howard. And um, he said, hey, Todd, I've been a uh, GNC fan for a long time. It's my pleasure to present you uh, with our service and product called uh, ramenbox.com. Uh, he says, in a nutshell, we're the world's first customizable box of instant noodles. <laughs> You guys want to check this out? I thought it was pretty cool. Ramenbox.com. So thanks, Howard, for that. Um, got an email here from Frank. Say, hey, Todd, join, judge enjoins release of any photo or screenshots for the spying program. So uh, Frank's been keeping me up to date on what's going on in Philly with that. I'll have a link up in the show notes. Got an email from Nick. He says, hey, Todd, my, Nick, my name is Nick, and I just purchased your podcasting book. 
Boy, Nick, that thing is uh, getting a little bit dated there. He says, I'm in the process of starting my own small podcast show, and I'd like to know how to post it on Facebook. If you could help, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. Nick, hey, here's the deal. Get it up on a blog, and then just post a link to it in uh, Facebook. You basically can just uh, put a link to the uh, the actual uh, blog post, and that's probably the best way to do it. I don't think you can actually publish or post or use Facebook as your podcasting platform, uh, but you know, just get a blog going and uh, and then link to it through uh, Facebook. That's the easiest. Got an email from Andrew. Hey, Ty, I just saw this. And remember, you speak about a business card scanner. Here's a good o overview of many different scanners from one of PC Magazine sites. And actually, Andrew, I, I bought the uh, – that's down on the floor. Well, the card scan, uh, business card scanner has been working really great. Okay, last couple of emails here so we can get wrapped up. Um, got an email from Jill. Said, hey, Ted, just want to let you know, listen to GNC Podcast. I'm a Linux powered chumby internet clock with the wonderful Mediafly widget. Again, Jill, we hope to have you a wonderful Blue Barrier Tech Podcast widget soon. I would love it if GNC could make its own Flash based widget for my chumby so that I could watch the video stream also. Smiley face. Love the show. Your enlightening, enlightened geekiness and your lighthearted laugh. Oh, love your show. Your light, enlightened geekiness and your lighthearted laugh. Yours truly. Geek and Tucks, Jill. Thanks, Jill, for being a listener. She sent me a picture of herself. Uh, thanks for being a fan of the show. Appreciate it. Got an email here from Scott. Hey, was wondering how well is the Wi-Fi working on your iPad, and does it have the same range as a laptop on Wi-Fi? Scott, so far, no issues. I went all over the house with it and used it. Um, read it. I've used it in the reading room where I normally wouldn't have a computer. Um, had it in our bedroom, which is the farthest away from any Wi-Fi spots, and it was working fine. So, don't know. He wants to send a shout-out to Scott. Hey, Scott, it was nice meeting you, and uh, thanks for sending me the image. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're actually going to talk about Scott's company in the next show. i got to uh, find some stuff. We'll talk about that in the next uh, podcast, or this company Scott works for. Um, okay. The Todd that sent me the email. I know that you're upset at me for not doing my show Monday night and uh, basically waiting to see the show live. You know, sometimes it just happens, friend. I, you know, I do my best to put out the show every single night on schedule, on time. I don't, I never try to miss a show. You guys know that. I think, as I said in the beginning of the show, 570 or what are we, what are we up to tonight? 500 and let me look at the show notes so I give you the exact number. Tonight is. A uh, 567, and you know I've done 500 and probably 557 shows on schedule, on time, every time. Um, I think that uh, during CES I usually take off. That's two shows for every year I've been to CES. I took a vacation where I found a substitute. I took a couple of shows off when my dad died, so maybe it's higher than 10. Maybe it's 15 over five years or 20 over five years. And uh, I think that's pretty good numbers and pretty good reliability for doing the show. And I know you're staying up late to watch me on Ustream. Um, sign up for the newsletter, and that way I'll make sure that you get the info that I'm not going to be online. Uh, I do my best, but, you know, s things come up. It's life. And, I, you know, I'm like the mailman. I really tried to deliver uh, on schedule, and I apologize that you're upset at me and that you have um, lost uh, – confidence in my degree of professionalism in doing the show. Um, he says, I want to drop this line to let you know that, that this last week I feel you have lost your lost a degree of professionalism towards your response to your show and your audience by not keeping us informed as to whether there would be any shows so that those of us that stay up very late to watch a show live could go on and sleep. While that may not be a concern you're, to you a great deal, there are only a few shows that are setting the stage for the new media broadcasting, that is how audiences will judge reliability to which consumption of such media will be consumed. Remember the old saying, we'll be watching, Todd. I, you know, I, I appreciate that, Todd. I really do. But at the same time, again, man, I had my hands full, and uh, you have my apologies, and I'll do my best to announce in advance uh, whether or not I'm going to be online. Um. Got an email, one more email from Andrew. Is looking forward to tonight's show. I'm sure it will be a long one since my email earlier this week. I've been working on info about a page. Oh, anyway, I have some stuff up here from Andrew. Thanks, Arlo, Andrew, for all that. 
All right, folks, uh, not too long, hour 20. Again, mucho apology for uh, not being on Monday and Thursday and delaying today's show to Friday. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, normal time, normal place. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the family, being part of the Ohana. If you want to blast me, go ahead, geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline 619-342-7365, and uh, we'll be here for you, and I hope that you'll be here for me. Thanks for your support. Thanks for supporting the sponsors. It is definitely appreciated. They help keep the lights on here quite literally. And uh, so, I, you know, this show's reliability depends on me being able to feed my family too so I don't miss a show lightly. Um, I guess that's it. Everyone take care. Lots more information as I get uh, basically debriefed and stuff about NAB. So we'll talk about that on the next show. But uh, look forward to seeing everyone next week. Take care and aloha. Ha.